Hey, be careful with that. That's the most expensive piece of equipment I've got. What is it? A cathode ray tube. Gee, ain't science wonderful? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's try it. Oh, gosh, Rocky, I'm afraid to. What do you mean, afraid? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, no longer filled to the brim with mucus. Up front this week, according to an article published by LiveScience.com, one organization is taking extreme measures to ensure that at least the memory of the human race survives. The nonprofit Arch Mission Foundation has created a lunar library composed of 300 million pages of human history, civilization, and technology. Shrinking the information down and fitting it on nanotech disks presents a backup plan for our species, ensuring that our accumulated knowledge will not pass from existence. Launched last week on the Israeli Barachit lander, the Lunar Library will hitch a ride on the lander to their eventual destination on the moon, arriving sometime in April. The library is actually composed of 25 nickel disks that are a mere 40 microns thick. Designed to be accessible to a range of technologies, the disks contain both large text easily viewed with a simple magnifying glass and other more detailed information that can only be accessed using high-power scanning electron microscopes. The third in a series of initiatives dubbed the Billion Year Archive, the Lunar Library joins two more of its brothers currently installed in various locations on Earth. The curators of the library chose their content carefully, including classic literature, scientific manuals, and the entire English Wikipedia. For PNT's part, we can only applaud the Arch Mission Foundation for attempting to preserve the best of human culture, and for their good taste in not including a single YouTube replay. From lunar libraries to mysterious mummies, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Ireland, where the long dead are losing their heads, literally. According to an article by NPR, vandals in Dublin broke into the vault of the historic St. Michan's Church, removing the head of an 800-year-old mummy nicknamed the Crusader. Apparently not satisfied with their cranial crime, the mummy manglers then proceeded to damage several other well-preserved corpses, including that of a nun that lived over 400 years ago. Archdeacon David Pierpoint stated in an interview with the Irish Times that they broke open that vault and broke open one of the coffins. Parts of the contents were found strewn about. Probably speaking for most of us, he expressed his disgust at the desecrations and made a request of the wannabe bellocks of Ireland. I would appeal to those responsible to examine their consciences and return the head of the crusader to its rightful place. Despite few leads, the Irish police service is investigating the matter and promises to prosecute those responsible to the full extent of the law. For PMT's part, we deplore the actions of anyone who would wantonly destroy cultural artifacts, seemingly for no reason other than their own amusement, but also must wonder how the heck they managed to muster up the courage to touch them in the first place. I mean, seriously, have you guys not watched like every mummy movie ever made? Good things do not come from disturbing the dead. Ever. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few moments. But first, a word from our sponsor. This is the sound of a human heart. It will beat 72 times in this minute. Every beat can be a painful throb if you have a headache. This pain remedy is Bufferin, the one doctors recommend by name more often than any other leading brand. 
take two bufferin, and every beat can mean your heart is pumping bufferin's pain reliever through your bloodstream. Why such speed? Because bufferin is the modern drug for pain. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a remarkably clear and remarkably strange UFO encounter filmed in Brazil. The footage, taken on January 1st, shows a large angular-shaped craft hovering and rotating in the skies over Curitiba, Brazil. Let's have a look at the footage. So what was the hexagonal object caught on tape last January 1st hovering and slowly spinning in the skies over Curitiba, Brazil? Let's run down the possibilities. Obviously, it's not birds, clouds, stars, meteors, flares, or the light of Venus reflecting off a weather balloon filled with swamp gas. Drones, while relatively ubiquitous in these times, would not likely be a cause in this instance due to the sheer size of the object, the shape, and rotation of the craft. Drones, as we have pointed out in multiple episodes, rely on propellers in order to move about and maintain a steady hover. 
While it is possible that some enterprising soul could construct an extremely light shell for a drone that might mimic the appearance of the hexagonal shape seen in the video, it would be terribly unpractical due to a number of factors. One, enclosing the airspace around a drone would interfere with it attaining proper lift, but it still does not account for the rotation of the craft. Okay, so we couldn't do it inside the shell, so how about a drone simply carrying it on a string dangling off the bottom? Again, this is possible, but unlikely. We do not see any evidence of a drone either at the top of or above the object, and if it were dangled on a string, it would certainly be unable to remain absolutely still, and unaffected by the obvious air currents around the object. One can see from the movement of the palm trees in the beginning of the footage that there was considerable air movement the day of the recording, and yet the object apparently seems to ignore this. Well, okay then, PNT, how about a balloon then? Say, a large party balloon. Well, again, it's certainly possible that there might exist such a large and well defined balloon. PNT was unable to find any commercially available party balloon in this shape and size. The nearest match we could find at all were the art installations flown by Studio Thomas Saraceno in 2017. Saraceno used a variety of aircraft, including a series of custom solar balloons. And although they are similar in shape to the craft on the video, these custom pieces are merely diamond-shaped with three flat sides and flat tops. The object in the Brazil footage clearly has four sides on the top and four sides on the bottom, giving us a total of eight. Think two pyramids stuck together and you have it. PNT searched for balloons of either party, weather, or solar variety and was unable to come up with a direct match for any of these possibilities. So much for balloons, then. So, how about a very large kite? Could we in fact be not looking at an immense craft hovering at a distance, but a far smaller and far closer custom kite? While it can be difficult to determine the size of an object in the air, which is why it is crucial to not zoom in if you are recording a UFO, because by providing background elements such as trees, houses, and especially street signs, you also provide known or approximate size references that can then be used to determine the size and altitude of an object. In this case, however, the witness did just that, which tells us that this object was not smaller and closer, but larger and much farther away. So, in short, not a kite. Even large custom kites would again have difficulty in maintaining a stable hover and, of course, the rotation that the object displays. So, with drones, balloons, and kites at best unlikely sources to explain the object, we can now move on to the next possible answers. Small aircraft and, of course, military craft. The object does not match the silhouette of any known small aircraft or military craft that PNT could find, and with the world's governments reluctant to share the details of their advanced projects with the general public, and particularly given the proliferation of U.S. military installations across the globe, if this is a military test project, then there is no way to determine whose craft this might be, much less why it would be present. So, with most of our rational explanations accounted for, we can now turn our attention to the more exotic possibilities. What if what we are seeing here is evidence of contact by an advanced technical species? Where or when do they come from? Are these extraterrestrial visitors peeking in on our world for reasons that are entirely their own? Could they be studying us in order to determine the best way in time to initiate contact between our civilizations? Watching our reactions to their presence carefully in order to better judge if we will react in a hostile or peaceful manner? Or are these visits simply the intergalactic equivalent of cow tipping? We may never know for certain, for the visitors seem to be as reluctant to reveal the true purpose of their visits as the world's governments are to keep it under wraps and out of the public eye. If we are being visited by beings from across the universe, our next dimension over, or even our own future, 
then why conceal their existence? Do they still believe that our societies and religions would be unable to adapt to the certain knowledge that we are not alone, but in fact inhabiting a vast universe along with countless other races and cultures? Have we not proven time and time again that as our knowledge increases we find new ways to adapt ourselves? Can we not do the same with the UFO phenomena? We are fundamentally stronger together than we are apart. Imagine what we could do as a united species, a united world, given the knowledge of our place in the universe and freed from the petty limitations of hatred, bigotry, and fear of the unknown. The choice, ultimately, is not that of the visitors, whatever they may be, but ours. While disclosure could be the vital catalyst our world needs, it will still remain to us to shape a better world and a better future. But whether the remarkable pyramid-shaped object caught on tape January 1st hovering and rotating over Curitiba, Brazil was an ambitious hoax, part of an unknown and possibly global military program, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comment sections below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts out the truth. <laughs>